Hey guys, welcome back and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am going to be reviewing the new Astralis Fresh and Flawless Full Coverage Foundation. I have been trying this out for a few weeks now, so today I'm going to give you my review, show you some swatch comparisons and also show you a demo. I also picked up the new matching Fresh and Flawless Concealer and the much loved Fresh and Flawless Powder. So if you're excited for this review to hear how this foundation performs on me, make sure you give it a thumbs up and keep on watching. I'm going to start with the facts as per usual. So Astralis is an Australian drugstore brand. They are cruelty free and they do have quite a wide range of cosmetics. You can pick their products up from Priceline, or if you are international, you can also shop online. Now this foundation comes with 30 mils of product and it retails for $19.95. It doesn't go into much more detail on the website. It doesn't state what kind of finish the foundation has at all. And as for the shade range, it is quite impressive for a drugstore brand. It's nice to see that they are finally expanding their ranges. This one comes with 30 different shades, ranging from very light to deep dark, all with varying undertones. So on the Astralis website, when you're looking for shades, it does come up with an information sheet letting you know what shades are in which category and what undertones they all have. So I picked up the shade Fairest, which is from the very light category, and this one has a neutral undertone. I think that the shade is very light, which is great, but the undertone is a bit more on the yellow side rather than smack bang in the middle neutral. There is a shade below this called Ivory, and this is for cool undertones. And judging by the picture on the website, it just looked like it was going to be a bit too pink for my skin tone. And then in the very light category, they also have the shade Pearl, which is for warm undertones. For reference, I do have normal combination skin. I can get a little oily throughout my T-zone, but I also get breakouts, so sometimes my skin can be a little dry from those. All right, well, let's jump into the demo and I'll talk a little bit more about the application, the finish, and the coverage. Now, you don't have to use a primer if you don't usually. I find that having a more hydrated base works best with this foundation because it is a bit more of a matte formula. I applied it the other day with no primer and it just didn't look that good on me because my skin was a little bit dry so it was kind of clinging to those areas and it looked rather patchy. I don't have a lot of major breakouts at the moment either. I've got one down here and here. I'm not going to color correct them and cover them up with concealer like I usually would because I want you to be able to see how full coverage this foundation actually is. So this is actually a very liquidy formula. It's really thin and it feels really lightweight on the skin. So I just like to get a concealer brush, dip it into the foundation and then apply this to my face and then I'll blend it out with my brush. I'm going to be using my Sigma Round Kabuki F82 brush. Now I found that I just get a better application with the brush. The sponge I thought left it looking a little bit patchy and it definitely took away some of the coverage. I will go over it in the end with the sponge just to smooth everything over, but the brush for me was definitely the best way to apply as I get the best coverage and the nicest finish. Now, I personally think that the coverage is fantastic. I have seen some mixed reviews on this one, but for me, I just need to go in with that one layer and it's more than enough to give me the coverage that I like. I've also tried building it up, but it didn't quite work for me. I think because the foundation does dry down quite fast, when you try and go in with another layer, it doesn't blend very nicely on top and it can look quite cakey. So now I'm just going to go over the top of it lightly with my sponge to make sure there are no marks left from the brush. Now, as I mentioned, I do find this to be more of a matte formula. So if you have a really dry skin, I'm not sure how this one will go on you. It doesn't completely dry down either. So I do go ahead and powder, but I do that with every single foundation anyway. All right, so here's what the foundation looks like on its own. I haven't powdered yet. Next, I have the matching Fresh and Flawless Concealer, and this one comes in 10 shades. You get 7.5 mils of product, 
and it retails for $13.95. I picked up the shade Fair and according to their color guide, this one is actually from the light category, not the very light category. But the shade Ivory from the Very Light category looked like it was really cool and had quite pink undertones. So that's why I went with Fair because I preferred the neutral undertone of this one. I thought this concealer was alright. I do prefer something that's a bit more full coverage as I really like that flawless look under the eyes. So I probably wouldn't purchase this one again. But if you prefer more of a medium coverage under the eyes, then this might be better suited for you. The concealer also has quite a strong scent. It's similar to MAC Studio Fix. So it's not fragranced, but it kind of smells like paint. <laughs> the foundation on the other hand though, doesn't really have a scent. There's no floral scent and there's no chemical scent. Zoom me in for this eye. So I do like the color match. It's just the coverage isn't full enough for my liking. I'll go in with a second layer. When I'm done, as I said, I do like to set with powder. So I've been going in with my usual Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil for setting under the eyes. And then I've been testing out the Fresh and Flawless Powder in the shade Light Beige for the rest of my face. So this Fresh and Flawless powder has been around for years and it's been a holy grail in a lot of people's makeup routines, but I just never thought it come light enough for me. So when I was looking at foundation shades, they actually had a little chart that said what shade would be suited for your skin tone and blah, blah, blah. So they said light beige would go well with the foundation and the concealer shade that I chose. So I decided to give it a go and it's definitely a good color for me. Thank goodness. It's a really nice powder. I find that it adds just a little bit more extra coverage, which is really nice. It's a really comfortable powder. It doesn't feel too heavy on the skin and it just sets everything in place really, really well. All right, so here is a close up of my foundation, concealer and powder complete. I feel like I've got a really nice coverage. I love how full it is, but it feels really lightweight on the skin too. It's not feeling heavy and overdone. Now, one of my favorite things about this foundation and the reason I have been raving about it so much over on my Instagram is the longevity. After 11 hours of wear, it still looked absolutely amazing. I'll insert a clip now from the other day when I wore it to work and I had it on for 11 hours and you can see for yourself how it looked. This is the foundation after 11 hours of wear. So it is coming off around my nose a bit and my chin, like it's fading just the tiniest, but you can barely notice it. So usually I do get a little oily throughout my T-zone and I do tend to blot throughout the day, but with this foundation, absolutely no oils come through. I didn't have to blot once. So if you have oily skin, this foundation might be worth trying out. It barely broke up on me as well. It's just that tiny bit of fading around my nose and chin, but for 11 hours of wear, that's pretty damn good. I found it to be quite sweat proof as well. If you watch a lot of my foundation reviews, you would know I have a major problem with sweating on my mustache. And usually foundations break up and they can't handle that moisture coming through. But this one held up throughout my sweating at work. And even the other day I was babysitting my niece and I was rocking her to sleep and I was getting pretty worked up and I could feel the sweat coming through my mustache. And I was like, if my makeup is ruined, I'm gonna be really mad. But you know what? I went and looked in the mirror, gave it a little dab, and it was still flawless. All right, let's jump into some swatches of the foundation and concealer. Okay, so I'm starting out with some concealer swatches. This here is the Astralis Fresh and Flawless in the shade Fair. This one here is the Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 05 Ivory. And here we have the L'Oreal More Than Concealer in the shade 322 Ivory. So this is super full coverage 
This is medium and this is medium as well, but I'd still say a little bit more sheer than the Maybelline. Onto foundations, this is the Astralis Fresh and Flawless in the shade Fairest. Here we have the L'Oreal True Match in the shade 0.5N. This is also described to be a neutral undertone. So you can see the difference here that the Astralis does look more yellow. Next we have the Maybelline Superstay in the US shade 110 Porcelain. Here we have the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation in F0.7. And lastly, I have the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. All right, guys, well, that is all from me today. I hope you found this review helpful. Overall, I freaking love this foundation. It was such a good match for me, and I am really happy with how it performed. If you are going to try it, though, I would watch a few other reviews because, as I said, I have seen some mixed opinions. I think that's what you should do anyway as a consumer. Watch a few reviews and then make a decision yourself if this is going to work for your skin type or not. But anyway, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know if this is a foundation that you are going to be trying out. If you aren't already, make sure you come follow me over on my Instagram. I actually did some before and afters wearing this foundation the other day on my IG stories and I have highlighted them to my product reviews tab. So if you want to see a little bit more, you can go check that out. If you made it to the end of this video, then take a screenshot. The stupider my face, the better. Post it to your IG stories and tag me and I will share the love with everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you want more foundation reviews, I will link my playlist down in the description box. Otherwise, I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.